Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are going to replicate what I did in my last video. And so if you have not watched that video, I used Inventables Easel to create an inlay for a cutting board. It was super simple, super to do with Easel. So I thought that I would try and do the exact same operation using Carbide Create. Both Inventables Easel and Carbide Create are free software that are really intended for beginner CNC's. So I really just wanted to see how easy or how hard it is to reproduce what I did in Inventables Easel with Carbide Create. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to pull in the same exact file. We're going to try and create the tool pass, create the inlay and the pocket and then uh, see what kind of results we get. So let's go ahead, let's cut over to the computer and let's get on with it. All right, well, here we are over in the computer and what I have pulled up is Carbide Create. It is a blank file. I have not done anything to it yet. So I am using the latest version of Carbide Create that I have downloaded from the uh, uh, Carbide website. It has some uh, new features in the beta mode as well if you want to check those out. So the first thing we're going to start doing here is to set up the canvas similarly to how we did in Inventables Easel. So the first thing we want to do is click set up here. I want to uh, set up my, it's called a job setup in Carbide Create, but I want to set up the size of my workpiece. And so if you recall, it was uh, 20 inches long and it was 12 inches tall for the cutting board and it was 1.25 inches in uh, total height. Now in this case, you get to select hard wood, which is good for what we're doing here. Uh, Shape Oco 4 is probably the closest thing that I have to that uh, Onefinity in the back there. And we'll just leave the retract height set at a tenth of an inch for right now. If we need to change that, we can, but uh, probably not the point of this video. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. You can see that it has expanded the size of the video. So the first thing we want to do is pull in that exact same image that we did for the easel demo. So I'm going to click import here. I'm gonna pull up the pig file again. So we'll click OK. And as you can see, once again, just like the last time I did a carbide crate uh, video, it uh, made the pig very large. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna scale this. Uh, the red dashed lines mean that that vector is already selected. So I'm gonna click the scale button here, which I believe is here. Ah, yes, okay. I'm gonna click 14 inches, just like we did before. And you can see that it automatically is set to scale both the uh, height and the width proportionately, so that's good. Uh, one thing to note about Carbide Create, which is a little annoyance of mine, uh, is you have to click the Apply button uh, and then the Done button. If you click Done, it won't apply anything that you did, uh, which is a little odd. I would really want it, if I click Done without clicking Apply, to at least prompt me and say, hey, you have unsafe changes or something, but it doesn't do that. So we'll click apply. You can see that the pig is not rescaled. We will select done. We'll click on this here and look for a node somewhere and see if we can grab it. So there we go. Um, now I have snap to grid turned off. Uh, generally, I like to leave that off unless I have a specific reason to snap things to the grid. It just makes some things easier. So we have our base image here. So if you remember in the easel demo, we created two more workspaces where one was for the inlay and one was for the pocket. Now Carbide Create does not have the ability to create additional workspaces. So uh, what we're gonna have to do is save separate files and kind of operate on them independently. But there's some things that we need to do to the pig to get it inlay ready. So let's uh, go ahead and walk through that process. So as I mentioned earlier, there is no uh, inlay option or inlay tool for Carbide Create here. So what I have discovered is you can use the fillet tool to kind of simulate what you're doing in that inlay creation process. And so I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. You can see the pig's ears here are very rounded. So we are going to go ahead and use that 1 8 inch bit again. The dimensions of the ears right there are much, much smaller than at 1 8 of an inch bit. Uh, so we do need to round them out a little bit. And that's what the fillet tool is going to help us do. So again, we select the vector that we have here. Uh, uh, and then I am going to select this little icon here where it says fill it all. 
And so the default here is half an inch. Uh, that is certainly way too big for what we want. So I'm gonna say one, two, five. That is uh, an eighth of an inch for this. Now you do have the option here to replace the original vector with the new vector, which we will do. Uh, so we will select that here. But if you wanna keep the original vector for some reason, you can do that. Now what you can see that the tool has done, it has taken these rounded areas here and it has smoothed it out so that everything is an eighth of an inch in diameter that will allow that eighth inch bit to get in there and remove all that material without any issues. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here and you can see it replaced the original image with this new scaled image. Now you can see here it kind of cut off the tail so we have a little tail nubbin and this little curly cue up here in the top. Uh, we don't need this so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit delete and it's going to go away. You do have the option here at this point if you do want to edit the vector for some reason or another uh, you can do so. I do recommend editing the vector before you do the fillet operation just to guarantee you get all those curves at that right diameter. So now that we have this set up this is the vector that we're going to use for all of our future operations. So uh, there's a couple things that I want to do to this right now uh, that will lead us into the inlay process. So the first thing is we want to take this and we want to expand it a little bit to create that gap between the inlay that we stick into the cutting board uh, that we generate with the profile cut versus the pot. Pocket. And so if you again recall from the easel demo, we uh, used a setting, I think it was four thousandths of an inch, which was that gap. So we're going to reproduce that here. So I'm going to select the vector once again and then select the outline tool that is over here. It's called offset vectors. And so the distance we want to offset here is very, very small, four thousandths of an inch, and we want to offset on the outside. Now, the reason we want to offset on the outside, because if we did it on the inside, it would decrease the diameter um, that we had just set with that fillet tool. So you want to increase on the outside, and that'll actually make the diameter just a little bit bigger, which means that that eighth inch bit will be able to get in there and do the operations without any problems. So I will click apply here. And it doesn't really look like anything's uh, changed. But if you zoom in and you look very closely, you can now see that we have two vectors, one right next to each other, uh, the uh, outlined vector, and then this one right here, which is the original profile vector. And again, they're very close to each other. So what I'm going to do at this point, because we can't have multiple workspaces in Carbide Crate, I'm going to save this file twice. <laughs> I'm going to uh, command S for me and I'm going to just save it to my downloads, but I want to call it pig pocket is the first and we're just going to go ahead and click save and it's going to save it to my downloads folder. Now, right now I want to save it again as the inlay. So we'll say save as I want to save it as pig inlay. Uh, and what this is going to do is this is going to create the two files that we need for the pocket and for the inlay. But both of them right now have both vectors on that. And that's a little bit of mental cue for me later on in the process to know which file I'm working on. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click save. We are currently in the inlay version of the carbide crate file. And so the inlay, we want to be just a little bit smaller than the pocket. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead, zoom in as close as we can, select that outline, which is going to be our pocket outline, and we are going to delete it. And so we'll hit delete. There you go. And so now what we have is that inside dimension, which is uh, accurately scaled for that 1 8 inch bit. It is time to go ahead and uh, restructure for the inlay wood that we have. So I want to select set up here again. The wood that we have, just like last time, is uh, 24 inches long and 8 inches tall. It is 0.123 inches in height. Uh, and we are going to let the zero be in the lower quarter. We've got hardwood, retract setting looks good. Everything here looks good. So now it is rescaled that canvas uh, to be that uh, size of the wood that we have. So I'm gonna click the vector here, uh, try to drag it into a location that is pretty good, just like we did last time. Click OK. So now we have the pig on the wood that we wanna cut. The next step is to create our tool pass. So I'm gonna select that vector again select tool pass here and we want to do that contour cut of the pig so we create that inlay that we can put into our cutting board so i'm going to select contour the first thing we want to do here is select the bit that we want to use to cut uh, so we're going to say select tool expand out shape of hardwood cutting bits and mills and then there is an amana 46 
200-K bit. This is the perfect bit for this operation. It is a down cut bit, which means you're gonna get a real nice surface finish. It is an eighth of an inch, uh, but it also has a quarter inch shank. Uh, and I like using quarter inch shanks when I can, because uh, it gives the bit just a little bit more stability. And you can see on the right hand side of the pane here, there are some default cutting parameters that they've set up. Uh, and that's okay, we're gonna tweak those just a little bit to match what we did in easel. So I'm gonna select okay. And so now it's gonna prompt you for some of your basic cut settings. So these settings, once again, are a little bit conservative. They're not nearly as conservative as easel, uh, but they are still very conservative. So step over for a contour, doesn't matter. Uh, depths per path, again, this is uh, very small. Actually, I'm gonna make it half the diameter of the bit. So uh, 0625, we're gonna change our plunge rate uh, here to B30, and then our feed rate to B60, just like before. Now, Carbide Create does allow you to set the RPM. So for some of their machines, the Nomad specifically, you can control the RPM. 18,000 is probably a good RPM. If you're gonna do this for real with a real cam software, like something like Fusion 360, you would definitely wanna take a look at the chip rate, make sure that the chip rate was matching uh, your surface speed and your RPMs to what your bit is capable of. I have found these settings of 60 to be okay. Technically, it should run a little bit faster, but uh, 60 works just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and select okay, here you go. Now, at this point, we wanna set uh, where we wanna start and end our cutting. So uh, in Carbide Create, it just defaults to use the top of the stock, which is good. In the max depth, and so it defaults to a 10th of an inch. In this case, there's a nice handy little button that says, well, I just wanna cut all the way through the material, so I'm gonna say, use stock depth. You just click that button. If you wanna add a little bit more, like maybe you wanna cut just a little bit below the bottom of your stock to make sure it gets all the way through, or if there's slight variances in the thickness, you can do that. And so we were gonna go ahead and do that. Just set that at 0.125. And then we wanna say that we wanna cut on the outside. And so because we move it to the outside, it's gonna preserve the sizes of those curves again, uh, so that we can perfectly match what we're doing. Now, just like easel, we do have the ability here to put in some tabs, so we will do that. Uh, so the default for the tabs are actually quite large and quite tall. In fact, in this case, it's almost the, type, the height of our material. So we're gonna change that to be 0.125 uh, wide, which is an eighth of an inch. And then we're gonna change our tab height here to be uh, 0.625, uh, which is 16th of an inch. And then you can see here, it asks you where do you wanna put the tab here when you scroll into this. So we're gonna put a tab right here on the top of the body on the bottom of the body here, and then on the bottom of the feet, just to hold those feet in place. We'll put one here right on the nose, and then one kind of right here on the uh, hind quarter. <laughs> that should work pretty well. If you wanna add additional tabs, you can, no problem. And then you just go ahead and you select OK, and your tabs are there and you're good to go. Let's rename our toolpath, contour. Uh, underscore 0 0.125 to tell us that that is the size of the bit and we should be okay. Click okay. Now you can see that it is uh, in the background computed the tool path. It says the cut's gonna be about two minutes or so. We're gonna say select our wood grain here for the simulation. It doesn't really matter what you simulate in. It's just what she shows you. It doesn't affect the tool path or the cutting parameters. And then we're gonna say show simulation. And you can see, here you go, uh, that it has created those tool paths. You can see the tabs right here. Uh, and if we kind of rotate a little bit, you can see the tabs are a little bit lower uh, than the surface because we set them at that 16th of an inch tall. That should be good to go. The tool path looks good. Uh, we got uh, two uh, cuts down to you know around the pig here. Uh, so it looks pretty good. So at this point, we can go ahead and just say, save our G-code like we did with easel. Type in maybe pig uh, inlay uh, 0.125. We're just gonna save it to the downloads folder again. Save, and now it has saved your G-code. All right, so I'm gonna hit uh, save to save this project file, and now it is time to go in and make that pocket. So let's go under file here. We're gonna say, recent files, we're gonna say pocket right here. And so it's gonna reopen that file and just check some of the parameters here. We're gonna go into setup. Uh, so it is 20 by 12, good to go, uh, 1.25 inches tall. So everything from the setup is good to go here. 
All right, so now that we have these set up, everything's all ready to go. What we need to do is uh, remember that we have two vectors on this canvas instead of one. Uh, we have that outside one, which represents the wall of what we want to do for the pocket, and the inside one uh, that represents that profile that we're going to use for the wood that we're going to do for the inlay. So what we want to do is select the inside one, and we want to delete it, get rid of it from our canvas, and then zoom out. Now we want to make sure the pig is centered on our workpiece because that's what we want for this specific operation. So uh, Carbide Create does not have that cool little function that Easel has. It says center to workpiece, uh, but there is a little hack that I found that uh, makes it easy. So if you select your vector here and you select the little crosshairs, that'll allow you to move your piece. Uh, and so in this little frame here, you can see that there's different anchor points for your vector. So if you select the center, that'll select the center of your vector. And then you, we know that our workpiece is 20 inches long by 12 inches tall. So now we can go ahead and just say, hey, the center of that is 10 and six. So that is half of 20 and 12. So we'll select apply, then we will select done, right? And that puts the pig at the exact center of our work material. All right, so now that we have the pig where we want it, we have the vector selected. Now we can start doing our tool paths. In this case, like I said, we want to do a pocket. So in that pocket tool path area, we want to start out by validating our bit settings. Because we previously selected for the inlay, it is uh, defaulted to that bit. So the tool should already be selected as that Amana bit, which it is. We'll click OK. Uh, but all of the cutting parameters are defaulted to the pocket parameters. So now here, in uh, when you're doing a pocketing, the step over is a uh, important parameter that you need to keep an eye on. Now it is a little bit unfortunate that the step over is expressed in terms of a decimal unit rather than a percentage. In my mind, it's a lot easier to just really understand percentages. So generally, I like to have my step over set around 40 to 50 to 60 percent of my bit diameter. I find that that gives good results. So the bit here is an eighth of an inch, I'm going to go ahead and launch my calculator, slide it over here. So after pulling up the calculator here, what we want to do is we want to take our bit. Uh, we want to, this is the diameter of the bit, again, it's an eighth of an inch, and we want to multiply it times 0.6. That is 60% step over. Uh, and so what we're going to say is the step over here is going to be 0.075. So we'll put that in here. And then the depths per pass. Uh, in this case, we can go a full diameter depths bit if you have something so in this case, we can just do a depth per path set to the diameter of the bit. If you have something like the Shape Oco uh, Pro or so, or if you have the X-Carve, uh, you might want to dial it back a little bit. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say we're going to do a single cut here. Uh, just like before, we're going to say the plunge rate is 45 and 80. I have found these to work fairly well for my Onefinity machine here in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select OK. Uh, it should have regenerated the toolpath. That looks pretty good. I am going to now set my depth here. Uh, now, in this case, we want to set the depth to the depth of the, uh, the wood that we're going to put in. So if you remember, the wood was 0.123 inches tall. Again, we want it to be a little bit proud of the surface so we can sand it smooth. So we're going to go 0.101, um, 0 0.1, <coughs> 0 0.121. <laughs> And then we got to name our toolpath as pocket 0 0.125, just like we did here. Click OK. Uh, we have our wood grain set. It's calculating the toolpath. You can see that it's going to clear out all this material. It says it's going to take eight minutes, which if I recall, Easel said it was going to take 13 minutes. So that's super interesting why uh, easel is going to take a little bit longer, but doesn't really matter too much. Uh, so if we want to save our G code now that we have it, we all right, so we just name it. We're going to say pig 0.125 underscore pocket. That tells us what operation it is, and we just click save, and now we have our G code. It is really that simple. Uh, we can show the simulation just like we did before here, uh, and you can see where it has the same wood grain sort of simulation, uh, and it's just going to cut it away in a single pass. It is very straightforward. Um, now, it does look like there's a little bit, it thinks that there's a little bit of wood left here. I'm curious about that. So we might want to go back and tweak our uh, step over. So maybe I got a backwards 60% step over is 40% uh, of the tolerance of the bit. So let's, let's try again. Let's say 0.125 times 0.4 is 0.05. We're going to change our step over. 
uh, here on our pocket. Right here, we're gonna go step over 0.05. Uh, so that is a smaller step over. This is why I like percentages, <laughs> quite honestly, right here. We're gonna click OK. We're gonna say, all right, so now we're up to 12 minutes. So that makes a lot more sense, much closer to what Easel presented. Uh, so a little mental cue, there is some value in doing a simulation. So uh, uh, not what I plan to do, but uh, worked out. All right, so there you go. I don't see any extraneous pieces of wood. That is good news. All right, awesome. So now let's go ahead and save our G code again. It's already defaulted. I'm gonna click save. Obviously this time it's gonna say, do you really wanna do it? Yes, I do, I wanna replace it. Boom, now we have our G code and we're good to go. So you can see from the process, it is a little bit more cumbersome here in the free version of Carbide Create, but it is not terribly onerous. Um, Certainly easels makes it easier than Carbide Create. There are some things in Carbide Create, however, that I do think are uh, just uh, more advanced and allow you to do more options. Uh, in the design space, you have some tools in here. Specifically, they've introduced the trim tool for a vector, which really allows you to dial in your vectors a lot easier. And I do not believe that easel has trim at all. Uh, the vector editing in Carbide Create, although is not terribly intuitive, it is, I think, better than what they offer offer in easel and it does have this corner tool where you can take right angles and fill it those independently from the entire thing so if you do have something do you want to fill it in and kind of allow that machine to roll around the corner rather than hit that hard 90 you can do that there as well and those are some things that carbide create offers that easel uh, does not have so like i said pros and cons it's really what you want to get into i think that uh, carbide Create is kind of a, a sampler for some of the more advanced tools. Easel maybe uh, is a lot easier, but you might hit a wall at some point where there's things you need to do in Easel that you can't get done. Uh, so the natural progression in my mind really is to go from Easel to Carbide Create to something like Vectric uh, or uh, Fusion 360. I would actually think maybe Vectric and then Fusion 360 if you wanna go that entire kind of workflow of the easiest to the hardest to get uh, simple tasks done, uh, but also if you have complex tasks, certainly you need to get something like Vectric or you need to get something like Fusion 360. These programs are not going to give you the options that you need to do something super complicated. And certainly if you're getting into a lot of 3D milling, there's a lot of limitations into what Easel offers and some limitations here in Carbide Crate as well. And those are paid options if you want to go that route. Well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It sure was a lot of fun to make. And so certainly comparing Inventables easels to Carbide Crate in this example really kind of led me to the conclusion, which I was kind of uh, expecting, quite honestly, that uh, Inventables easel is just a little bit easier to use for certain operations than Carbide Create. I do not necessarily find the Carbide Create user interface very intuitive to use, and certainly the number of different hoops that we had to jump through to reproduce that inlay was, uh, I guess, a little complicated, and I would just say a little bit disappointing. So if you are looking to do a lot of inlays, for example, maybe Easel is the better choice over Carbide Create. Certainly Carbide Create does have a couple options in the free version that Easel in the free version does not offer. Um, but I don't know that those are overwhelmingly important for just getting into the CNC hobby to warrant one over the other. But in this case, I will certainly say that um, Easel definitely won out over Carbide Create in my opinion. Opinion. So if you like this video and you like this type of content, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below if you didn't like the video, but I'd appreciate that thumbs up anyway. If you're not already following on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where you post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired.